thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, when I was a kid, <laughs> when I was a kid, one of my best friends in the world lived over the fence of our backyard. She was probably, I don't know, like in her late 70s when we first met. She was a diabetic, so eventually she lost both her legs. That's what they tell you when you're a kid. Mrs. Gully lost her legs. And when you're a kid, you're like, well, they got to be around here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and occasionally, occasionally, I would arrive on her front porch with all the woes of childhood, like the time that Pam Davison got to go to Camp Kataki. <laughs> Camp Kataki. Horseback riding, cookouts, canoe trips. I had to go to church camp. <laughs> church camp. Like a ride in a basket down the river is a good time. <laughs> yeah, fishes and loaves every night. <laughs> and honestly, getting stoned at church camp. <laughs> That just hurts. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sometimes when I arrived on Mrs. Gully's front porch, I was so upset I would have trouble getting the words out. And she would just hold up her hand. She would reassure me that she did, in fact, want to hear everything I had to say, but she was concerned about her grass. Was it growing? And I knew exactly what I had to do. I would have to go to the four corners of her backyard, and I would have to lay my head on the ground and watch and wait until I saw the grass grow. <laughs> and I did. Because <laughs> uh, I was gifted. <laughs> In fact, I saw a lot of things. I would see daddy long legs and little green lace wings and sometimes like even a caterpillar and raccoon poop. <laughs> and by the time I got into uh, Mrs. Gully's house and sitting at the breakfast nook, well, I had so much to report. I did so many questions to ask and those encyclopedias would come out one letter at a time and curiosity thrived and energy was redirected to a brighter place and, and the world, of course, the world got larger. That's right. Hey, Wendy. Um, anyway, anyway, so there it is. Curiosity, see? Curiosity is an ageless, an ageless traveler. She is a sightseer of the cosmos with an unquenchable thirst for knowledge. Yeah. She is the spontaneous, fiddle-playing, great-grandmother of creativity. Yeah, she loves to stand in the winds of awe and dance naked <laughs> on the lake of ideas. Oh yeah, no, she wants you to know that she is not idle. <laughs> And her cat, her cat is just fine. <laughs> so there it is. Curiosity did not kill the cat. <laughs> yeah. I really, I really do think it was that car. <laughs> you know. Yeah. She, uh, she lives. She lives with her twin sister, Lifelong Learning. <laughs> I know, kind of a long name. Her closest friends call her by her initials. Oh. <laughs> a lot of people can't tell them apart, but Curiosity is two minutes older, and oh is more into jazz Latin fusion. <laughs> She likes to sip wine. She likes to sip wine. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> 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 
I know. Oh dear. Wow, these aren't even. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and start over. She likes sipping wine, well, so do I. And um, while she stands in the spring rain of epiphanies, that's what she, she also enjoys long walks on the beach. <laughs> Just kidding. Anyway, um, the two of them want to extend this, well, wild, kind of wonderful invitation to you. Come and visit. Come and visit anytime. Come and visit all the time. Visit, visit them in the music. Visit them at the art walk and in books and classes. Visit them in conversations and in your imagination. They are not concerned about your income or your title. They just want to spend time with you while you are driving your cab, or flipping burgers, or washing your dishes, or drifting off to sleep. Your willingness and tenacity to pursue curiosity and learning are all that are required for your larger life. So, walk away from the familiar, and perhaps even get into the habit of doing so, because it's true, isn't it? It's really true that what you know can stop you from what you can know. And there is a whole menu to choose from out there, and you can fill your plate, and you can feast. So, move your mind, you know, shed your skin. Otherwise, your ideas along with your possibilities will be like phantom rain, like the rain that falls in the desert but evaporates before it ever hits the ground. Thank you, love. Um, <laughs> curiosity always starts with a question, doesn't it? Damn it, people, I asked you a question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there is this uh, great word in the word question, and that is quest, huh? Yeah, quest. So that's a seeking. You know, it's a journey, it's a, it's a pursuit. It's the holy grail. People, it's the hundred acre wood. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. you, you, you need to ask questions. Questions are at the heart of my business of humor and creativity. I mean, have you ever wondered even, have you ever wondered what a tree thinks when you're putting wood chips at its base? <laughs> is, it, is it like, uh, dad? <laughs> yeah. Questions are the tenets and structure of growth. Questions are the little ponies that have the potential to become wild horses. Why? Because curiosity is the pollen. It is the pollen of creativity. To be inquisitive is to be open to fooling around with ideas to create new synaptical connections, to be oh, wide awake. It was said of Leonardo da Vinci that he was this man who awoke too soon in total darkness while all around him slept. Da Vinci, see da Vinci, oh, you know what a brilliant human being who carried a notebook with him everywhere he went so he could write down his ideas and his musings and etchings and, I mean, and his, his curiosity was so diverse. It, I mean, it went to studies of flight and over here, oh, mm, anatomy and botany and then studies of water. And, and in his notebooks, in his notebooks, there were ideas and designs for things like a flying machine and a helicopter. And yeah, you bet, a parachute. Um, 
And trust me, I'm not even touching the tip of the iceberg. And people go, geez, you know, how did he do all that? How, where did he find the time to do no cable package? That's how, you know? <laughs> no, no, the average American minimally, minimally spends 8,300 hours on screen time. Yeah, before I cut my cable, I'm telling you, I watched all the CSIs. Yes, I did. Yes. If someone died in here right now, I, I would know exactly what to do. <laughs> That's right. I would swab you all. <laughs> but really, really, do you know what you could learn, accomplish, create with 83? hundred hours, even 4,000 hours. Be curious about that. Buy yourself a notebook. <laughs> and I know some of you, oh, I know some of you are like, well, I'm waiting to be inspired. Yeah, I'm going to move when I get inspired. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> I, 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 but I have to agree with the amazing painter, Chuck Close, who said that inspiration is for amateurs. The rest of us just got to show up and do the work. And I think the universe, I, I think the universe has a matching grant for you, see? I think if you show up and you do your good work, the road will rise to meet you. And on that road is where you're going to find inspiration. And I believe we all need to be on that road for our homes and our neighborhoods, for our lovely, lovely, lovely earth, for the business of life and no doubt for the life of business. You know, we need to be on that road for the romance. Mrs. Gully was crazy about her husband, Mel. Her heart would sweat for this man. But she made it very, very clear because he stepped on his rainbow maybe 20 years before she was on her way that despite the fact that she loved him so much that she truly believed that the best romance was the romance with life. And that if you were having a great romance with life, there was a real good possibility that all your other romances would thrive. So there it is, love. Yeah, little baby. <laughs> you, you have a great romance with life. You know, be curious. Fall in love with learning. Ask questions. Listen well. Fill a notebook with your words your ideas, and then, yeah, every once in a while, you better be putting your head down in the grass. Thank you.